My name is Michael and this is Use Vim and today we're going to talk about auto commands. So before I started this video I've installed a linter for the file type that we're going to work with uh, YAML. Uh, so the linter is called ALE -A -L -E, and the um, actually linting plugin is called YAML lint. So these three steps are how to install that plugin uh, and linter on a Linux machine. So what is an auto command? An auto command is a command that uh, you can call when an action occurs or an event occurs um, in the editor. So for example, when I save a file with write, when I uh, split a window, when I close the editor completely, these are all editor events that are happening and um, this little auto command language allows you to apply um, essentially many functions of programs um, at the time those editor events occur. So what's the pattern for using an auto file? Well you can um, use them down in the command line here but we're actually going to put them in our um, vimrc file so it's uh, the syntax or the pattern is auto command and then the events or events that you want to listen for uh, the file type pattern that you care about and then the command that you want to be execute want to execute so it could either be a command like we call in the window down here in the ex mode or it could be some normal mode command that you could uh, call and apply as well the types of events that you want to listen for or can listen for there's actually a whole host of them um, so that we're just going to talk about a few here in this video um, buff new file buff read post buff write pre and buff win leave so uh, these four that we're going to talk about are when there's a brand new file uh, created that is unpopulated when uh, we read a file of a certain type that is a buff read post. So basically when we first open a file that already has content. Buff write pre is an event that fires right before we save a file. And buff win leave is when we uh, leave a window. So if we have a window open like this and we leave it, that's buff win leave. Okay, let's get into it. So we're going to be working with this YAML file and you can see over here in the left the gutter displaying all the syntax errors and there's a little bit of highlighting going on showing uh, the syntax problems in this YAML file that the editor doesn't like. Let's add a few more here. So what we will do here is first of all I don't like the way this color scheme looks so let's change that first. So we're going to work with our VimRC and you're going to see a few artifacts in there that we're going to use later. Um, so let's just start off with our first uh, auto command, which is uh, auto command uh, buff read post. Uh, so when I open a yellow file, I want to set the color scheme to a different color scheme that I like a little bit better called Kohler. So let's do that. All right, there we go. The color scheme has changed for the YAML file. And when we load our VimRC, it's using the default color scheme. If we load that YAML file, so we load a YAML file in a, or read it into a new buffer, you'll note it changes the color scheme again. And if we close it, it's still the same color scheme. So let's actually manipulate that as well. We'll use that uh, buff right, I'm sorry, buff uh, when leave event. So when we leave that window for a YAML file, let's change the color scheme back to the default color scheme, which is what's being used right now. So let's try that again split 0.yaml. Okay, there's the new color scheme applied. Leave the window. Bam, we're back to the default color scheme. All right, we're rolling. Let's do a few more things. So, this time what we're going to do is auto command buff uh, read post. So we're again listening for when that file is opened, uh, the YAML files. It's a uh, the format or the schema for, for YAML, it uses just spaces. It doesn't use the tab character, so, you know, it doesn't use that tab character. So what we're going to do is we're going to set, and it cares about indentation as well. So we're going to set our indentation to something a little bit smaller because by default it uses uh, eight indents in, in Vim. You can see here in the lower right, 
it's indenting by eight. So let's set the shift width equal to two, the tab stop equal to two, the shift tab stop equal to two, and expand tab, which means that when um, I hit the tab, instead of typing a tab character, turn that into spaces. Okay, let's look at that. So, we'll add some tabs and watch it end up down here. So, two. All right, so that worked. But we can't actually see those um, spaces or tabs. So that's what this little line here is. You can you can look up what list cares is um, in the documentation and the help if you want to. Actually, you can look up most of these commands in the help. I've got a window or a video on on help that you can review if you want to figure out how to navigate it. But essentially, what this is doing is it's going to do a character substitution. So when there's a trailing space, it's going to add this little dot um, instead of just a space character so we can see it a little bit more clearly. And there you go, you can see the spaces here. So I'll just add one here and you can just see. So that was that little manipulation. Okay, great, we're having fun now. Uh, let's try actually cleaning up our file now. Um, so that's what these regular expressions are for. Um, what we're going to do is when we write, or when we save it, the YAML file, I actually want to remove the comments. So let's, I'm sorry, not remove the comments. Uh, remove the blank lines. And when we save the YAML file, we also want to remove trailing white space. So let's try that. So we're going to save it once. Okay, and it's removing all that trailing white space, but we still have a couple of blank lines here. Let's save it again and it removes that line, but it throws an error. So what's happening here? Well, we'll save it a third time and it throws the error. So this is essentially doing a search and replace in the file, and what's happening is because we've already cleaned it up, it is missing the search, so that's why the error is being thrown. So let's ignore those errors by using silent. So we'll save it again. Okay, great. No errors. Let's just check that it still works. And this takes two swipes at it. So you'll notice that this line here, line number seven, when I save it this first time, it removes those trailing white spaces. Um, but because it wasn't an empty line, which is what this, that means that's an empty line, it didn't pick it up the first time. So we'll save it again and it should take care of it. So great, now we're doing a little bit of uh, automated linting of our files when we save it. Uh, let's add a few more commands in here. So this one will, you'll notice in the uh, YAML files, it's throwing an error because it says right down here, it doesn't have a space after the comment. So if we added a comment further in the file here, another comment, same thing, it doesn't like that trailing space here, or, or rather the uh, no space uh, existing for the uh, after the hash sign. So let's add that. And this one will fix the dash not having a space. So let's try those. Alright, cool. Now I'm linting my own file. So you can see here that that was the error for that one and there here. Now we save it, it just fixes it. Great. So a little bit of automated uh, linting that we can build into our VimRC. 
Okay, last little bit about auto commands. Let's add a auto command for buff new file YAML. And what we're going to do is we're going to read in the skeleton file whenever we open a new YAML file. So if I do uh, one dot YAML here, it will populate it with the contents of this skeleton file that I have already created. You notice that because it doesn't have a YAML extension here, it's not taking the highlighting in the skeleton file. And then there's a couple of syntax errors, so we'll just save it and lince it again. Okay, great. Uh, a few other things here. So you can use uh, multiple file types. So you the a valid extension for YAML is YAML as well as uh, .yml. So let's add that. Let's just check if it works. It does. Okay, and next. So I've got a video unfolding so you can learn a bit more about it, but one thing I've started to slightly like for YAML files is setting the fold method to indent and the fold level equal to 2. And what this will do is when I l open that YAML file, it will automatically indent or fold um, fold levels greater than 2. So this would be a 0, this would be 1, this would be 2, and so here's 3. So it's just a way to kind of shrink um, larger files for easier displaying. And last little bit about auto commands. Uh, so you can use Uh, groups to cluster YAML commands. I'm sorry, to cluster auto commands. So the reason I've been opening and closing the editor all, every time is because these um, these uh, auto commands they will um, be left behind even if I reload the uh, vimrc. So if I put them in a group, I can unapply the group by calling it. So the bang here is a is a delete. So if I was I had all these YAML commands applied I could unapply them with that our group not. Alright so that's it for uh, auto commands but I wanted to talk just briefly about um, the YAML syntax. So you see I've been using this uh, YAML file, which is actually an Ansible playbook, which is uh, an automation tool that uh, is quite popular. So, what I wanted to talk about, just real briefly, is that just because the syntax is actually valid, so this is valid YAML syntax, and if I alter this slightly, it'll throw a linting error because um, it's no longer valid. I've fixed it, so it's now valid syntax. And just because this syntax is valid doesn't mean that Ansible is going to like this. So what's going on here? Playbooks must be a list of plays. Well, so YAML is a is like a, a programmatic language, but Ansible is a tool that's using this language, so it expects the program Ansible expects a certain sort of uh, schema to be used when you interact with it. And so the error that you saw throwing there was that a playbook, which is the program I'm throwing to a Ansible playbook, it expects a list at the top level um, when it's being passed its uh, its parameter here, which is the the YAML file itself. So that's what these. Uh, if you don't know any, if you don't know the details of YAML, that's what these dashes are here. So it's uh, if you're familiar with Python, it's like a list or a dictionary type. So right here at the top level, we've got a list, and then within the list, a list of one element, 
Now within the list we have um, a dictionary. So a dictionary has a key of hosts with the value of we'll called host, a key of become with the value of true, a key of remote user with the value of user, and then a, a, another dictionary of tasks that contains a sublist, and the sublist is a dictionary, uh, etc. And then down here is a list of two items. So just because it passes the linter, uh, the YAML linter, it may be valid YAML syntax, but the program that you're interacting with, in this case Ansible, might expect a certain schema um, when it accepts things. So um, the, the YAML linter can only take you so far. You also have to uh, correctly format the uh, files against the tool that you are using. I think that's one of the reasons why these, uh, this template is so, uh, this template here, skeleton, is so useful because uh, you can actually create s templates for the program that you're working with and um, you know populate some of the elements or the the schema that uh, the program accepts. Well let's actually before we go here let's just do the I created the proper syntax and let's just run a syntax check there you go you see that it it now works.